Good morning all. Today we'll be having a session on antipsychotic agents. Why we should know about antipsychotics? Worldwide, about 1% of the population uh, is diagnosed to have schizophrenia. So, uh, the burden is increasing. So, at the end of this session, the student should be able to list out the typical and atypical antipsychotic agents, explain the mechanism of both typical and atypical antipsychotic agents and list out the common adverse effects of typical as well as atypical antipsychotic agents. So, before going to antipsychotic agents proper, you should know what are the types of psychiatric illness. So, it can be broadly classified into psychosis and neurosis. So, uh, what are the diseases which come under this psychosis which includes schizophrenia, mania, depression and bipolar disorder which comprises both mania and depression. And what are the neurotic disorders which includes OCD that is obsessive compulsive disorder, phobia, anxiety and post traumatic stress disorders. So, what is the difference between this psychosis and neurosis? psychosis the insight will not be there whereas in neurosis the insight will be present and judgment reasoning everything will be impaired in psychosis there will be no contact with reality whereas all these will be intact in case of neurosis so reality contact will be there judgment reasoning everything will be there here again in psychosis there will be delusions and hallucinations in neurosis, both are absent and here there will be personality changes and in neurosis, changes in personality is usually absent. So, what do you mean by delusion? Delusion is nothing but a false belief which cannot be corrected by reasoning whereas hallucination is false perception. So, without any stimulus, the patient might have visual hallucinations or auditory hallucinations. So, these are typical of psychosis. So, what are the symptoms of schizophrenia? So, again, it is classified into positive and negative symptoms. So, positive symptoms which includes your classical delusions and hallucinations as we saw earlier. Delusions is false belief which cannot be corrected by reasoning and hallucinations where there will be false perceptions without any stimulus like visual hallucinations or auditory hallucinations which are typical of schizophrenia. So, somebody uh, they will hear uh, somebody uh, speaking, uh, so they will hear some voices, right. So, negative symptoms which includes apathy, anhedonia, cognitive blunting, okay and neuroleptic dyskinesias. So, what do you mean by this? Anhedonia means loss of pleasurable activities. Okay. And uh, cognitive blunting, so uh, the performance, everything will be poor, right? So, these are negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So, again, the key negative symptoms which a practitioner can identify on observation, which includes the patient will be having reduced speech. So, positive of thought will be there, okay, and poor grooming. So, uh, his claws will be dirty, stained, and uh, they those patients they don't have uh, eye contact with a physician, right? So, limited eye contact will be there. This can be uh, just when we observe, we can easily find out. And some uh, symptoms which are identified on questioning, which are the negative symptoms which are identified on questioning, reduced emotional responsiveness will be there and interest will also be reduced. There will be reduced social drive. So, all these which can be identified with questioning with the patient. So, now let us come to antipsychotic agents. So, we can classify based on structure okay, and based on potency we can classify. So, uh, depending upon that, we can give for the, uh, we can give for the patients. So, based on potency, so high potency agents and low potency agents. So, high potency agents which includes your fluphenazine, haloperidol. So, haloperidol which is uh, uh, again commonly given in 
a psychiatry ward so in the gh la nareya peri kuda attended the postings haloperidol is again commonly given here right pimozide thiotixin these comes under high potent agents you can remember this as flu so flu is uh, one which is uh, known to cause pandemics so flu stands for flu phenazin h has h stands for haloperidol so p again for pimozide so these are highly potent agents and which are the agents which have low potency again clopromazin also commonly prescribed so clopromazin okay procloperazin promethazone and thioridazin which are low potency agents so common cold again we can we know uh, common cold is uh, uh not so harmful uh, like a flu right so c for common cold so c again so which is uh, less harmful low potency we can remember that for chlorpromazin so high potency the main commonly used agents is haloperidol this is among typical agents i'm talking about typical agents among the low potency agents we can remember chlorpromazin right now coming to the atypical agents so atypical agents all these they have a suffix like pine or dun mostly they will have pine as suffix or dun okay so clozapin olanzapin quetiapin zotepin azinapin risperidone ziprasidone paliperidone then other drugs like aripiprazole certanzol and amisulfiride okay so pine so pine dun these are the uh, common uh, suffixes with atypical agents so you can remember so now move on moving on to the mechanism so here you can see this is uh, dopamine released from the presynaptic uh, terminal and is acting on the dopamine receptors so this is meso limbic pathway so here you can see the dopamine is acting here here the dopamine receptor is blocked by your typical antipsychotics so uh, this blockade of uh, dopamine receptors in the meso limbic pathway controls the positive symptoms of schizophrenia especially delusions hallucinations and blockade of receptors in the mesocortical pathway here you can see the dopamine is released from the presynaptic terminal this is the dopamine receptors this is your d2 blockers so blockade of this d2 receptor in the mesocortical pathway so leads to increase in negative symptoms like apathy okay anhedonia okay so increase in negative symptoms will be uh, more when dopamine uh, receptors are blocked in the mesocortical pathway so this is the thing i have written in words like so when post synaptic dopamine receptors are blocked by this d2 receptors in me mesocortical pathway we'll have emotional blunting and cognitive problems so this mimics the negative symptoms of schizophrenia so it is also referred to as neuroleptic induced deficit syndrome so this side effect of antipsychotics they are also called as neuroleptic induced deficit syndrome so what happens if a patient has predominant negative symptoms so when you give a typical antipsychotic which blocks this mesocortical pathway uh, the d2 receptors in mesocortical pathway if it is blocked what happens the negative symptoms will get worsen worsen so what happens when dopamine receptors block the nigrostriatal pathway so when the nigrostriatal pathway is blocked we get symptoms like parkinsonism so which are called as eps extra pyramidal symptoms extra pyramidal symptoms so what happens when dopamine receptors act on this tubero infundibular pathway so tubero infundibular pathway your prolactin levels will rise so dopamine normally has a inhibitory action on this pituitary lactotrophs so dopamine receptor is blocked so automatically prolactin levels will rise okay galactoria and gynecomastia can be seen as side effects so to be clear dopamine blocking action controls the positive symptoms of schizophrenia whereas your serotonin blocking action controls the negative symptoms of schizophrenia so how can we remember so you all know this movie 3 so uh, dhanush is a, a hero in that so he'll be playing two roles initially he'll be in a, a normal state uh, so after uh, marriage uh, he'll uh, have this he'll be diagnosed to have schizophrenia right so you can uh, remember as uh, dhanush exhibiting uh, two roles in this uh, movie so d2 blocker is a main mechanism for typical antipsychotics and three for this movie 
three you can remember as typical antipsychotics they act on three pathways that is mesocortical okay mesolimbic okay so nigrostriatal pathways and three extra receptors so dopamine uh, blockade alone will not be there so it also blocks m1 h1 alpha 1 receptors okay so this and uh, typical antipsychotics not only block the d2 receptor they also have action on three extra receptors like here m1 alpha 1 and h1 so conventional antipsychotic or typical antipsychotic this is the image which you can easily remember so d2 blockade responsible for antipsychotic action alpha 1 h1 m1 action m1 receptors are also blocked so you can get side effects due to blockade of this which will be discussing so haloperidol which is a highly potent agent so evlo duram and dopamine blockade irko avlo duram adunodaya side effects will also be higher so extra primal symptoms will be higher so coming to the pharmacological actions so what happens in normal individuals in normal individuals uh, there will be uh, reduced speech so some emotional quieting will be there the patients will have the tendency to fall asleep whereas in psychotic individuals where their behavior everything will be aggressive violent so all these uh, behaviors will be normalized with your antipsychotic agents and uh, they will have some disturbed sleep pattern so everything will be normalized with the use of antipsychotic agents and uh, these uh, as we said it has action on h1 uh, uh, receptors also it blocks the h1 receptor so sedation will be there so tolerance develops to sedative action okay but not to antipsychotic action uh, antipsychotic action on long term usage and this clopramazine which is commonly written as cpz so cpz is the abbreviation of clopramazine so it can lower the seizure threshold so it can precipitate seizures and all typical antipsychotics they have anti emetic action except your thioridazine so thioridazine so which comes under low potency agent it doesn't have anti emetic action okay by acting on ctz receptors and coming to the autonomic nervous system so as we said it has alpha blocking action so what happens there will be postural hypotension will be there anticholinergic action so what will be the side effects like dry mouth constipation blood division all these will be there so cvs due to blockade of alpha 1 receptors again hypotension can be there postural hypotension and ecg changes there can be arrhythmias with some typical antipsychotic agents qt prolongation might be there with atypical agents also and uh, clopramazine has got membrane stabilizing activity it has got local anesthetic property and skeletal muscle by acting on basal ganglia it can reduce its spasticity also so what happens in endocrine again so we have seen by blocking d2 receptors it can increase the prolactin levels it can reduce your gonadotropin secretion growth hormone secretion is also reduced and also there is a decreased release of antidiuretic hormone so these are the pharmacological so now coming to atypical antipsychotics so atypical antipsychotics multiple receptor action so predominantly they antagonize the phd 2a receptors which is responsible for controlling the negative symptoms of schizophrenia also d2 blockade will be there weaker action on d2 right so we can see multiple receptors so some have action on serotonin reuptake uh, in so some have actions like serotonin reuptake inhibition norepinephrine reuptake inhibition sri stands for serotonin reuptake inhibition nri stands for norepinephrine reuptake inhibition so uh, like your um, typical antipsychotics atypical also can antagonize alpha 1 h1 m1 so in 5hd receptors it has action on all the 5hd 1 to 7 receptors so each drug might have action on different serotonin receptors okay but predominantly you have to remember as sda serotonin dopamine antagonist that is the mechanism of atypical antipsychotics weaker d2 action and stronger antagonizing action on serotonin receptors so you can remember with this uh, movie onion so he has multiple roles here right uh, so though they there he may not have this uh, schizophrenia there he might be having some uh, dissociative disorder so for uh, mnemonic i have uh, used this movie so multiple receptor action he is in that movie he have multiple uh, roles so multiple receptor action this atypical antipsychotics will have so uh, they will have action on serotonin dopamine also on even on serotonin reuptake inhibition norepinephrine reuptake inhibition and for remembering the drug names 
so this is the one uh, who usually closes that means uh, he will kill the people this onion so you can remember onion so that uh, he will close so you can remember as close up in for that drug and another role will be ambi so a stands for aripiprazole and azinapin and another role is uh, remo so r stands for risperidone okay so clozapin aripiprazole azinapin risperidone so these are some common atypical agents so clozapin so it has action on multiple receptors so not this uh, except this sri and nri it has action on other receptors like uh, 5-HT2A, also D4 blocking will be there, okay? So, alpha-1, H1, M1 and 5-HT1A, 2C, 3, 6, 7. So, all the serotonin receptors. So, advantage of this clozapin is it will not cause tardive dyskinesia because the D2 blocking action is very less. So, D2 blocking, it's again correlated with your side effects that is extra primal side effects so in d2 blocking kammi arkadanala you will extra primal symptoms like tardive dyskinesia will be lesser with your atypical antipsychotics like clozapin and there will not be any rise in prolactin levels so it, it controls both the positive and negative symptoms so what is the drawback with this clozapin is clozapin is the reserved drug for resistant schizophrenia only when uh, schizophrenia is not treated with your typical agents or other atypical agents the last drug lost reserved drug is clozapin so you should not use it as a common one so resistant cases you have to use this clozapin and it can cause agranulocytosis again uh, uh, white blood cell count you have to go for uh, counts uh, but uh, clinical cases of agranulocytosis are not yet reported right so it can cause side effects but uh, it, it's not that common and it can also cause uh, unstable bp that is partial hypotension will be there tachycardia due to that reflex tachycardia will be there it can also precipitate seizures and main drawback of atypical agents is they can worsen the metabolic syndrome so weight gain when the rumba common are atypical agents like weight gain again diabetes okay so metabolic syndrome which is common maximum weight gain can be seen with clozapin so this is another uh, atypical antipsychotic agent olanzapin which improves both positive and negative symptoms like your clozapin and this is more epileptogenic when compared to your uh, clozapin right and it has also got more potent anti muscarinic action so like clozapin it can also cause weight gain diabetes and even it can cause stroke now coming to risperidone so among the atypical agents risperidone has got uh, more potent d2 blocking activity so uh, it can again cause extra primal symptoms so extra primal symptoms are seen with atypical agents with risperidone in high doses all other atypical agents they don't have this only this risperidone because of its high d2 blocking property it can cause eps in high doses and it can also cause increase in prolactin levels increased stroke risk and weight gain and postural hypotension can also be seen with risperidone now coming to quetiapin so quetiapin like other atypical antipsychotics it can also block 5 hd 2 a and d2 apart from that alpha 1 alpha 2 h1 blocking activity is there and quetiapin it has got a uh, depending upon the dose it has got a peculiar future so you can remember this as papa beer mama beer and baby beer so papa beer so which is a big one so at high doses 800 milligram it has got non-selective action it has action on various uh, receptors so it can cause it can give antipsychotic effect whereas in 300 milligram do dose that is it's called as mama beer because konjo uh, so mama beer so it has got only antidepressant action selective action again 50 milligram dosage la romba kammi again still selective aido it has got only sedative action so hypnotic action so depending upon the dose quetiapin effects vary okay so aripiprazole which is unique among the atypical antipsychotics because it is a dopamine partial agonist it's not an antagonist it's a partial agonist in d2 receptors it is the only one antipsychotic among uh, that too among atypical it has got only uh, partial agonistic action on dopamine receptor so it's called as a dopamine stabilizer so balance between agonist and antagonist you can remember that okay so it's a dopamine stabilizer so you can remember that is a, this is the only antipsychotic without eps because it has no action on d2 blockade so it is a partial agonistic d2 receptors it's a dopamine stabilizer 
And another thing is ziprasidone. Ziprasidone it has action on serotonin reuptake inhibition, norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. Okay, so it has a anti-depressant effect. It has an anxiolytic effect. That is the advantage of ziprasidone. Zebra. You can remember as zipra. And what are the uh, common uh, suffixes for the among the atypical antipsychotics? Zipra and aripipra. So these have least weight gain. Okay, least weight gain. So atypical antipsychotics are a cut time of weight gain. Irko. Among the atypical antipsychotics, le, the least weight gain pathing na zipra zero no aripipra aripipra zero. Again, zipra zero no additional property irko the anxiolytic antidepressant property irko. And these two drugs. The ziprazidone and aripiprazole can cause arrhythmias, QT prolongation can be seen with these atypical antipsychotics, especially ziprazidone and aripiprazole, right? So pharmacokinetics, again, uh, relevant uh, points which includes they are highly lipophilic, they have large volume of distribution, highly plasma protein bound, okay? And they are metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzyme, so drug interactions are possible. And long-acting depart injections are similar drugs are available. So we can give it as injections like haloperidol, okay, ziclopentixol, flufenazine, flupentixol, risperidone. So long-acting depart injections, na, weekly injections are we can uh, give, especially for non-cooperative and psychiatric patients. compliant So in those cases, this will be very useful. So now coming to uh, uses. So main thing for treatment of schizophrenia. So first generation drugs common na kudupanga. Depart uh, injections epa kudupanga maintenance mainly they are given. So resistant cases you have to go for close up and behavioral emergency so violent we can give injections of haloperidol again chlorpromazine and bipolar disorder for bipolar disorder also some antipsychotics are useful especially the atypical ones like your olanzapine, risperidone, quetiapine, aripiprazole are useful in bipolar disorders also. And what happens when there is a drug induced psychosis like fencyclidin which can cause psychosis you can give haloperidol to treat that. And sulpiride, which is a drug which has got also got antidepressant like your zip, ziprasidone, so which is an atypical antipsychotic. The sulpiride has also got antidepressant action. Then for uh, Huntington's chorea, Torex syndrome, you can give the typical agents like haloperidol. And we have seen antiemetic action. So thyroid and tavira, antiemetic action, typical agents like right? And one interesting thing is promethazine. So it's a phenothiazin. Phenothiazins, they have antipsychotic properties. And promethazine is a phenothiazin which has got antiemetic property but no antipsychotic activity. This is one interesting thing with promethazine. And uh, apart from this, for free anesthetic medication, promethazine can be used, okay. And uh, for uh, pruritus, because it has got antihistaminic effect, promethazine can be used, which has no antipsychotic action, but are other actions, okay. And for neuroleptic analgesia, we can give fixed drug combinations of droperidol and opioid analgesic fentanyl. And for intractable hiccups, so we can give parenteral chlorpromazine or haloperidol. Well, very level, the common they have used this for intractable hiccups. Control a ahala. So, on the case, they can give parenteral and the chlorpromazine. So, the adverse effects which includes extra syndromes as we have already discussed. So, what are the extra symptoms which includes dystonias, akathisias, right? Neurolip malignant syndrome, tardive dyskinesias, Parkinsonism. So, these are the extra symptoms. So, which are seen mainly with high potency typical agents, conventional agents. Incoming call from Venkatesh Babu Piki. So it's seen in the first week of therapy, dystonias. So where there will be spasm of muscles of face, tongue, neck and back. So you have to treat it with centrally acting anticholinergics like benzotropin, biperidin and we can also give antihistamines like diphenhydramine. For akathisia, which is seen in first to eight weeks of treatment, so there will be only motor restlessness will be there, which is the most common EPS and we have to give it with, treat it with beta blocker proper. And Parkinsonism usually seen within one month of starting typical antipsychotics. So the triad of symptoms you all know bradykinesia, tremor and rigidity will be there. And you have to give benzotropin, benzexol, the same centrally acting anticholinergics. And neurolept malignant syndrome, again the symptoms here will be hyperpyrexia, muscle rigidity, autonomic instability, there will be a fluctuating BP. An increased myoglobin and creatinine kinase levels will be there. You have to discontinue the typical antipsychotic and you have to give supportive therapy for fever and you can give centrally acting muscle relaxants like dantrolene, benzodiazepines like diazepam and bromocryptin for treatment. So perioral tremors which is also referred to as rabbit syndrome, there will be rapid chewing movements will be there. So again treatment will be central anticholinergics like benzotropin and tri
by hexafenidyl and tardive dyskinesia this is the one which is seen after years of taking antipsychotics imh la nam pathinga nariya patients vandu chronic ah romba varshama ange treatment eduthirupanga nariya paakala in the cases of tardive dyskinesia right so seen in 20 to 40% of patients taking classical drugs so mainly this occurs due to super sensitivity of dopamine receptors prolonged our receptors are blockade pandra pa enna aidum super sensitivity so again so many theories are there even oxidative damage which can lead to increase in glutamate transmission that can also lead to tardive dyskinesia so treatment vandu main adha dhaan so you have to reduce the dopaminergic over activity you have to give raise by uh, increasing the dose of neuroleptic or sometimes neurolept holidays vena kudukalam so continuous a drug edukama neurolept holidays can also bring improvement so usually vandu it remits spontaneously in 30% of the patients within one இது தான் மெயின் சைட் எஃபெக்ட் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா பிரமல் சிம்டம்ஸ் தான் டிப்பிக்கல் ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் அதுவும் ஹை பொட்டன்சி ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் லைக் ஹாலோபெரோலுக்கு ரொம்ப காமனாக வரும் தெர் மே பி அக்கத்தீசி அதுதான் மோஸ்ட் காமன் இபிஎஸ் டிஸ்டோனியஸ் வரலாம் ஓகே டார்டிவ் டிஸ்கனீஷியஸ் ரொம்ப லேட்டாக வரும் அகெய்ன் நியூரோலப் நெலிக்னன் சின்ட்ரோம் ஆல் தீஸ் கேன் பி சீன் வித் டிப்பிக்கல் ஹை பொட்டன்சி ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் தென் ஆட்டனாமிக் சைட் எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் யூ ஆல் நோ ஸோ பாஸ்டல் ஹை பொட்டன்ஷன் ஆல்பா பிளாக்கேட்னால வரலாம் ஸோ இதுவும் வந்து இது யாருக்கு வரும்னா எக்ஸ்ட்ரா ப்ராம் சிம்டம்ஸ் தான் ஹை பொட்டன்சி ஏஜென்ட்ஸ்க்கு ஆட்டோனாமிக் சைட் எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் மஸ்கரனிக் சைட் எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் இதெல்லாம் வந்து காமன் ஃபார் லோ பொட்டன்சி டிப்பிக்கல் ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ யூர் ஏ டிப்பிக்கல் ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் லைக் க்ளோசாப்பன் அண்ட் ஸ்ட்ராசிடோ ஸோ ஆன்டி மஸ்கரனிக் சைட் எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் ஹாஸ் வீ நோ லோ பொட்டன்சி டிப்பிக்கல் ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் க்ளோசாப்பின் இதுக்கெல்லாம் ஸோ ஆன்டி மஸ்கரனிக் சைட் எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் லைக் ட்ரை மவுத் கான்ஸ்டிபேஷன் பிளட் டிவிஷன் இதெல்லாமே வரலாம் ரைட் இதில் வந்து ஒன்னே ஒன்று எக்ஸப்ஷன் என்னென்னா திஸ் க்ளோசாப்பன் so what is typical with clozapine is it can cause paradoxical hyper salivation paradox sil edila vandu you have to remember so idu matta enna pannona paradoxical hyper salivation cause pannalam so as we said so m1 inserted and anti muscarinic side effects enna varalam constipation varalam blood division varalam dry mouth varalam or mari drowsy a irukalam so these are common with low potency typical antipsychotics so h1 nala enna varum so h1 blockade nala weight gain again sedation drowsiness will be there okay so i think you can now remember so which drugs can cause a granulocytosis cataract and the drug is varum seizures and the drugs typical or atypical again weight gain is common with typical or atypical you, you should know at the end of the session right so uh, i think students can now able to answer some typical agents and atypical agents so typical like haloperidol atypical like clozapine olanzapine quetiapine mechanism mainly your typical it's going to act on d2 receptors d2 blockade whereas your atypical agents it has multiple receptor action so mainly on serotonin receptor serotonin blockade and weaker d2 action and adverse effects typical agents they are more prone to cause extra primal syndromes uh, syndromes especially your high potency agents whereas your low potency typical agents can cause autonomic side effects and anticholinergic side effects whereas your atypical agents the main side effects which includes weight gain so metabolic syndrome it can precipitate diabetes right some can cause seizures so i think now you are very clear with antipsychotic agents thank you